What's up, everybody? It's your boy Blue here. Today, for this week, we are going to be doing the final, at least the final until the Kamigawa set comes out of the unboxing and upgrade guides for the Commander Precons. This is the Innistrad Commander Val Vampiric Bloodline Precon. We're going to open it up, show you what's inside, and then, as usual, we're going to go into an up a little upgrade guide that you can make this deck better. So, why don't we just skip all the other nonsense, do my favorite sound. Y'all ready? Alright, get it open, get looking at it, and then we'll kind of go from there. So, throw that there. So as usual, it comes with one of these. I don't know what the chits are for, I guess they're counters. Here's the box. Box looks pretty cool because it has the vampire on it. I believe that would be Edgar, but I don't know who it is. My memory shot. Alright, so that's it's a nice, clean, crisp black box, so... All right, so that's the box. That's a little insert. The life counter is that on one side and then the bat on the other. The insert, which of course used to have a small little play mat or how to play the deck, blah, blah, blah. this does just has a little bit of information on it. And then the most important part, the only thing we really care about is the deck. So let me go ahead and open that up. If I can, there we go. Put the deck up a little bit so that I can hold it easier and then we'll get started. Alright. Let me zoom in. Move the camera a little bit. Zoom in. And then let's go. Alright, so. Uh, Strifon Mar Progenitor is the commander that they've given you as your main commander. He's a red, a black 2, a 3 2 vampire noble. With flying, at the beginning of your end step, create a blood token for each player who just who lost life this turn. And whenever Strifon attacks, you may sacrifice two of those blood tokens. And if you do, you may put a vampire card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. And it gains indestructible until end of turn. So, it's like one of those uh, re recursion... Or no, I'm sorry. What the hell is the name of the damn one? The red-white one. The one that lets you uh, put things into play from your hand so either way that's what this one does the secondary one and i'm yep it only they only put one in just like the other one is timothar baron of bats it's a two black and four of any for a four four vampire that has ward and the ward is to discard a card so it can't be targeted unless the person discards a card and then whenever another non-token vampire you control dies you may pay one and exile it if you do you create a one one blood uh, black bat creature token with flying and it gains when this creature deals combat damage to a player Sacrifice it and return the exiled card to the battlefield tapped. So that's the secondary commander. That's why it's in foil We're gonna go on to the deck now. So this is what they included within the deck itself and Stop bouncing camera. So blood tithe harvester is the first one it's two to cast vampire Ancient craving for that, you know good black draw Blood Artist, good card. Expensive card monetarily to add to a pre-con. Bloodline, Necromancer. Uh, oh, I'll remind you, if I'm going too fast, you can pause the video to read the cards. I'm not going to read them all. Only a couple. Falcon Wreath Noble, so it's got a mini uh, Aristocrats theme. Feed the Swarm. It's going to probably be in every black pre-con going forward. Indulgent, Indulgent Aristocrat. Uh, Night's Whisper, nice addition. Nice card draw. Urge to Feed, put that on my Vampire decks too. Vampire Nighthawk, one of the better vampires uh, for the cost. It's a 3 to cast, 2-3, flying, death-touching lifelink. Uh, Rock Rackish Air, actually that gives all your vampires, right? Nope, never mind. Stencia, Stencia Masquerade, Vandal Blast, it's a nice addition. Rakdos Charm, Stromkirk Captain, <laughs> it's one of the lords. Arcane Signet, like in all of them. A Charcoal Diamond, which is crap. Commander Sphere, I don't really like. Fire Diamond, more crap. Rakdos Signet. All the Mana Rocks, the Soul Ring. Swiftfoot Boots for protection for the Commander. Unstable Obelisk. Uh, Command Tower. Mirrored Landscape. Path of Ancestry, so another one that included that. The Rakdos Carnarium. That's a great addition in my book. I need these for my own personal deck, so I'm glad they're in a couple of different 
pre-cons lately. Crossway Troublemakers. Uh, glass Cast Heart. So we're going into the stuff that's the rares for the deck, specifically only for the deck. Uh, Camber the Plunderer. Olivia's Wrath. Each non-vampire creature you control, uh, each non-vampire creature gets minus six, minus six, X. So that's actually pretty good. Uh, Predator's Heart, uh, Predator's Hour, sorry. <laughs> Shadow Grange Archfiend, or Archfiend. Arterial Alchemy. Imposing Granger. Uh, Lorene the Diversion. Markov Enforcer. Where's the partner? Partner is Camber. Okay, so Camber was further up. I don't know. Alright, maybe I'll come across it. I don't know. Midnight Arsonist. Sign of Opulence. A Sinister Waltz. And Anoan the Ruined Sage. That's actually a pretty good one. Bloodlord of y Vazgath. Vazgoth. Sorry. Blood Tracker. A Butcher of Malachor, nice reprint. A Champion of Dusk, another nice reprint. Cordial Vampire, again, another nice reprint. Damnable Pact. Dark Imposter. A Malachor Blood Witch, another reprint. A nice reprint. Necropolis Regent. Uh, Nirkana Revenant, that's a nice, nice reprint. You see this right here, that whenever you tap a Swamp for Mana, add an additional black. There are two or three cards that do that. This is one of them. I would like Crypt Gas is the other that I can remember off the top of my head. I've been looking for a bunch of them to throw in the decks, but it's nice to have this one as well. That's a nice reprint. Uh, Patron of the Vein. Sanctum Seeker. Really nice reprint for a deck like this. Whenever a vampire you control attacks, each opponent loses a life and you gain a life. So a nice more gain and drain. Stromkirk Condemned. Underworld Connections. They keep trying to push this. Underworld Connections. I myself don't like it. A lot of people do. I just don't like it. Angie's Ravager. <laughs> the other half of the deck. Since now it's possible to hold. Avacyn's Judgment. <laughs> so there's the Madness theme. Blasphemous Act. That's a nice reprint. Bloodsworn Steward. Flying Commanders you control. Get plus two plus two in haste. That's a good, nice little reprint. Crimson Honor Guard. <coughs> Falconrath Gorger, it makes all of your uh, vampires gain madness. It's in my vampire deck. Mob Rule, nice card. Molten Echoes. Stromkirk Occultist. Vampiric Dragon. And then, of course, we're going to go into Lands, Exotic Orchard, which is in every single one. Uh, Foreboding Ruins, the Rakdos color for the one that you... Reveal Mountain or Swamp, uh, Shadow Blood Ridge, Smoldering Marsh. It has the uh, type Swamp Mountain, so it's fetchable. Temple of Malice, Temple of the False God. Don't know why it's in everything. <laughs> Unclaimed Territory, not a bad option for this deck. Some swamps. See if there's a surprise in here. There was in the last one. Some mountains. And then, of course, the uh, extra thick or the oversized, as they're calling it version of the commander that comes with the deck and then tokens so we've got blood tokens and i'm sure a bunch of them in fact all blood tokens what's on the other side we got bat tokens pretty cool looking bat. and then some treasure tokens i like these treasure tokens with eyeballs not really treasure but whatever and some vampire tokens so that is the stuff or the contents of the vampiric bloodline commander pre-con that wizards puts out for the Crimson Val Commanders. This is the second of the two. The first one was the Spirit ones. So, uh, my personal opinion. So, here's what... And this is going to sound harsh, but... I don't really like this pre-con all that much. And I'll tell you why. So... With this... With, with vampires in general. Alright. If you're going to go vampire tribal... I mean, you're not going to go outside of Edgar because Edgar is literally the best tribal commander, I believe, in the game. I don't know of any that are better. So you're not going to go with anything that was in here. And if you're going to go the Madness theme, you're probably going to go with, uh, what's her name? 
uh, oh, I had her off the top of my head. Angie. They're going to go with Angie. So, I mean, it's an okay pre-con to start with. It helps you fill another deck, and then good luck getting your hands on it. Edgar, because, you know, Edgar's a hundred and something dollars now, so... But at least it helps you get there. You know, it, it helps fill out the rest of the deck for, like, I think this was $30 that I got it for, so... I don't know. For me, this isn't worth getting unless you're trying to build an Edgar deck so you can fill in some of the holes. It doesn't even fill in all the holes. It didn't have a couple of the ones that I'm going to mention in a minute. So, how about we just get started with the... Uh, upgrade section of this video and then we'll go from there so all right so we're going to start this like i always do and the upgrade section and we're going to go with the lands first things first i'm going to say that the upgrade section here we're going to go into a vampire tribal sub themes of blood tokens with madness and then of course there's the aristocrats so as far as the lands go uh, i'm going to start with voldaren estate to start with the blood token theme you got the normal Cabal Coffers and Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth, just because you're in black. Uh, Rick's Mahdi Dungeon Palace, that's for an, a Madness Enabler, if you want to go that route. Stencia Blood Hall is just damage. Uh, Castle Loctwain helps you draw into some better stuff. It's at the, you know, because you're in Vampires, your life total is going to go up and down crazy. So, I mean, Castle Loctwain isn't going to really matter that it costs life when you draw the cards, all right? Leech Root and Swamp is a card that I wish they would freaking reprint in any of these pre-cons, for God's sakes. Uh, it's nice free damage just for being a Swamp. Uh, Bullrash Stronghold is nice recursion, so you can get some of those uh, nice little vampires back. Uh, Castle Embereth helps you with your tribal theme if you want to do straight aggro. It'll help beef up your creatures. Shivan Gorge is free damage to everybody. Uh, same thing with Valakut, the Molten Pinnacle. That's not to everybody, though. That's targeted, but... You're going to be playing Mountains, so you might as well add it in there. Archer Varaska helps you with card draw. Uh, red and black do card draw, but it, it makes you pay for it, so it's nice to have it not, you know, hurt. Uh, War Room is another one that you can do for card draw. Cavernous Souls, obviously naming vampires so that your vampires can't be countered. Uh, Gyre Reach Sanatorium, again, for more madness enabling. And then I always suggest a land at the end that is good for land destruction for your opponents. So in case they have something that's quite horrible on their side, like their own version of a Urborg Cabal Coffers, and that's a Wasteland or any of the kinds that you can do with that. So that's just a couple of the land suggestions that I had that are not mana fixing. So no dual lands or anything like that. I'm, I'm not going to mention them anymore. So those are the ones that are not mana fixing. All right. Now we're going to move on to the ramp. So as far as ramp goes, I'm going to give you a couple of really expensive monetarily ones that are out of my reach for the most part. If I didn't open them in a box, then I probably don't have them. Uh, we're going to go with the Jeweled Lotus so you can get your commander out quicker. A Mana Crypt, same thing, or you can cast spells quicker. Uh, Mana Vault is the first time I'm going to mention this. I don't normally mention Mana Vault. It's outside of the realm of me even possibly thinking of getting one. Uh, but Mana Vault's a good one. It's one to cast, and you know, you get three, and then it doesn't untap unless you pay four for it, and then it does damage to you if it's, un if it's not untapped. Blah, blah, blah. I wish I didn't get... I used to have so many Mana Vaults, it's not even funny. Nobody wanted them, and now I have none because I sold my damn collection with all my stuff, and uh, whatever. Uh, Mox Diamond is another one as well. I'm not as high on the Mox Diamond. I've been testing out my, my Urza deck, and Mox Diamond is not hitting the way I want it to, so... It's a good option for a lot of people who do a lot of extra lands in their deck. Uh, if you want to go on the still monetarily not budget, but still cheaper than $70, I got a couple of the two, two to cast mana rocks here as suggestions, like the Felwar Stone. You got Fractured Power Stone. Every red deck, I'm, I mean, every deck I mentioned is going to say this Liquid Metal Torque because you can use any artifact destruction to kill your opponent's commander with Liquid Metal Torque, but Liquid Metal Torque. Uh, Mind Stones, Prismatic Lenses, and of course, you know, if you want to help keep your hand and don't want to discard down beyond the seven, you know, if you have a, more than seven, you've got a Thought Vessel, so. And again, red and black don't have very much when it comes to ramp. That's green's job and then white secondary. So those are the best options I can think of off the top of my head. If you have any more, put it in the comments. So now we're going to move on to the dudes. All right, so with the dudes, dudes, uh, and I mean creatures, I, I just call them dudes because it's just shorthanded. Uh, this section is 
extremely crowded because there are a lot of really good vampires you can use. Uh, depending on the theme you're going with, the vampire tribal theme, there's it's extremely crowded. Uh, if you use a sub theme of blood tokens, you've got extra ones you can throw in there, and then you've got the madness stuff. So this is a crowded section. I'm going to rifle them off as fast as possible and get through it as fast as possible. But this is going to be the biggest section. So uh, let's start off with the blood token section. Uh, a couple of them that you can do are like Angie's Made of Dishonor, uh, Belligerent Guest, Falconry Forebear, Olivia's Attendance. And then you've got the transform one of Voldaren Bloodcaster, which turns into Bloodbat Summoner. Those are some blood token options you can do. I'll have a couple of them up here so you can read what they do. Uh, I don't have enough time to go through all that. We're going to move on. Uh, again, we're going to do a Manus sub-theme, and I'm only going to mention three. We're going to go Angie Falconrath, which is technically, if you're going to do a Manus theme, you're going to do Angie as the commander. Uh, then you've got Angie's Ravager, because, you know, that should go with Angie. And then you've got Bloodhall Priest. Those are a couple of the options that you can do. I've got Angie up there for you to take a look at and see why I say, I say that she is the one that you should choose if you're going to do a man this one. Uh, then you've got the bigger, the biggest section of it all is the Vampire Tribal. Now, there is a lot. I have an Edgar deck. And i got to tell you, it's really hard to cut down when you're making an Edgar Vampire Tribal deck. There are so many good options in Vampire. In fact... I thought that zombies had a lot of good options. No, vampires have a ton. So I'm going to rifle a couple of them off. The one that I was talking about earlier that's missing that they should have put in here was Captivating Vampire. I'm a little biased on that because I don't own one. Of all the cards I have, the thousands of cards, I don't have a stupid Captivating Vampire. So I'm a little mad it wasn't in here. Uh, Thirsting Blood Lord. They are both tribal um, anthem deck uh, lords for vampires. So that's why I'm, you know, a little heated because I don't have the damn... Cat, Captivated Vampire. Uh, other ones that you can add in here. Stromkirk Condemned. Vampire Socialite I thought was going to be in here. Uh, Drana the Last Blood Chief. You got Kalidus Traitor of Get. Olivia Voldaren. I believe I said Anna One the Ruined Sage was in here. I think I saw that one. But if not, that's one to add. You got a Blood Gas so it can keep coming back. Uh, Bloodline Keeper, because it creates tokens that are vampires. And lastly, of course, you would throw in something like a, uh, a Veto, because you're going to make everything make you gain life, so that's the Drain and Gain, or the Aristocrat style. And of course, in my eyes, one of the best overall, I mean, one of the best creatures overall that Black has, not just Vampire, but Twilight Prophet. Puts cards in your hand and does damage. I mean... If blue could do that, blue would be unstoppable. But it puts cards in your hand and does and makes your opponent lose life equal to the convert them hand cost of the card that you put in your hand at the beginning of your upkeep. I mean, that is just I don't know what it, that I wish blue had that in some form in its color scheme, but it doesn't. So, uh, and then again, I mentioned there are too many to list. I mean. You can just go and look on, I use MTG Familiar, I've told you that many times, but I have an Android. Uh, if you don't, go to the Gatherer uh, and just put in Vampire and look. Even just look at the rare or even mythic ones and see how many there are that are good. Uh, do that, see what you like, put them in here. What they have in here, just, I don't know, kind of like the Spirit deck. They're a little weak sauce when it comes to what they put in here for the Vampires. I would definitely go and do some upgrades on the vampires themselves. So that's my opinion. I could be wrong. I don't think I am, but I could be. So for here, we're just going to move on to the spells. All right. So as far as spells go, you have a couple of sections here. I mean, every commander deck has, you know, card draw, removal, uh, board wipes, tutors, all that stuff. So then black encompasses most of that stuff and red encompasses the other. So this is going to be... It's not going to be as long as the creatures, I promise. So, uh, we're going to start off with removal. Targeted removal, like murder effects, murder itself. The devil, it's two colors. It's red and black, and it kills a creature. And terminate, same thing. Those are options for targeted removal. You've got mass removal. You've got things like damnation. They just reprint it in Time Spiral or remastered. Uh, Meat Hook Massacre is a newer card that just came out. It actually is a board wipe possibility because it gives minus X, minus X. And then it's a quasi, and I say quasi because it doesn't do it because of. So it 
if your opponent's creatures die, they lose life. If your creatures die, you gain life. It doesn't work where when a creature dies, gain and, and drain. So it's close though, and it's definitely a damn good card. There's a reason why it's almost 50 bucks, if not already 50 bucks. And then you've got Kindred Dominance, where you can choose the creature type that uh, that doesn't die and everything else does. Obviously, you're going to name Vampire Doesn't Die. Uh, more mass destruction, you got things, and I'm sorry to mention this. I really don't want to be that guy. I would never be that guy myself, but you got things like Joker Hops, which basically just clears the whole board, including of lands. Uh, it misses enchantments, though. Keep that in mind. Uh, same thing with Obliterate. They just remove everything but enchantments, so that includes lands. And yes, that includes basic lands. Uh, and Shatterstorm kills all artifacts in one shot, so you've got a whole bunch of options there. Uh, you've got Card Draw, and Red has a couple of neat things. because it's a, Because you can do Madness, for Madness you've got the looting stuff, like Faith is looting. And all the ones that say discard a card, draw two cards. There are so many now. So you have got those as options. Then you've got Bloods. You saw that it had a couple in here already, but like Sign in Blood, it's two black. Uh, lose two life, draw two cards, stuff like that. There's a lot of options for that as well, so that's an option for card draw. And of course, Tutors. Black is the king of Tutors, we know that. So you've got Demonic Tutor, you've got Vampiric Tutor, you've got Grim Tutor. You've got basically Tutor Your Ass Off, Profane Tutor. There's a bunch of them. So, you've got options. Red's tutors suck, but black makes up for it. Then you've got reanimation. So, like, reanimate. You've got living death, which basically just swip, swaps what's on, bo in, on the board with everybody's graveyard. And then you have the uh, lesser version, which is living end. So, that's a couple ways you can go with that. Uh, all of those options help you regardless of if you're doing Madness or Vampire Tribal or even Blood Tokens. So uh, take a look at them all to see what you, to see what you think. I'm going to move on to the enchantments now. Alright, so for enchantments, this one's going to be quick and sweet. Uh, you've got card draw ha uh, helpers and there's a bunch of them in black. Black is actually the king of drawing with enchantments. Uh, Necropodents obviously is the king. Uh, then you got things like Phyrexian Arena, which will... You know, make it draw a card and lose life on your upkeep. Uh, there's greed, stuff like that. So you can keep going with that. You've got something that's actually pretty cool with Madness, which is Faith of the Devoted. It helps deal damage to people. I have it up there for you to see. Uh, Dictative Erebos and Grave Pact are good additions. So when your creatures die, everybody else has to sacrifice something. So if you put something in here to help you sacrifice your creatures, you can see where I'm going. Gain and Drain, Aristocrat style stuff. I say no more. Uh, black market, so every time a creature dies, you gain a counter on it, and you, during your first pre-combat main phase, you get a boost of mana. Always a bonus. And lastly, the only red one I'm going to mention, because to me, when it comes to red enchantments, this, there is no match when it comes to tribal-style decks, and that's impact tremors. So every time a creature comes into play on your side, everybody takes uh, loses a life but you. So... Those are the enchantments that I have off the top of my head that I can think of to add to this deck that would make it much better. If you have any others, again, let me know. I'm going to move on to the artifacts. Uh, I'm going to make artifacts nice, short, and sweet. So, I am a fan of the monuments that were out in Monquette. Bantu's monument and Hazret's monument for this deck would be nice. It makes your creatures cost less. Bantu's monument helps gain and drain or aristocrat style stuff. And Hazret's monument helps you loot. So, one enables uh, Aristocrat style, one enables Madness stuff. Uh, you've got tribal stuff. There's a lot of tribal artifacts. I'm only going to name a couple. Uh, Vanquisher's Banner is a good one. And Herald's Horn, while technically not an Anthem style tribal artifact, it definitely helps your tribe always put them in a tribal deck. Uh, you've got Bolus's Citadel. Again, I said it earlier. Life does not matter in a deck that gains and drains. All right? So Bolus' Citadel is kind of like a combo piece that just lets you keep casting stuff. So the more life you gain, the more stuff you can cast on top of your library. And the last thing I'm going to mention, uh, I know that I usually mention equipment and protecting your commander. So obviously you're going to do that, and everybody knows what ones they are. But I'm going to mention sort of Animists because there is no ramp in red and black, and it helps ramp you. So those are, like I said, short and sweet. Those are the artifacts. I'm just going to move on to the Planeswalkers. Again, this section is going to be short and sweet. I'm only going to mention the following. Soren, Markov, Soren, the Mirthless, and Soren, Imperious Bloodlord. 
that's it. I don't really care about the rest. This is a vampire deck. Those are the vampire planeswalkers. That's pretty much it. Now, if you want to do a little bit of uh, different stuff, uh, you've got Chandra's and Sarkums that help you draw and discard to help the mana stuff, so you can take a look at that. But I believe that the Chandra's that do that are a little risky. They actually drop your whole hand and draw you a couple. So unless you're you're doing something where you're fully into madness and maybe even to a hellbent style deck, uh, the Chandra's I would shy away from. But if that's your thing, do it. All right. And finally, I told you that was going to be even shorter and sweeter. Uh, I'm going to go into the combo that you can choose. Are you ready to hear it? You know it's coming. I'm going to cringe, you're going to cringe, we're all going to go, ugh. I'm still going to mention it, because it's the combo that this deck needs. It's on, you know, on theme, and you can also add veto to the deck, which you're going to probably do anyway, and I'm going to say it. Are you ready? I know I don't have to, but I'm going to say it. Exquisite Blood Sanguine Bond. I know. It's tired, it's old, it's played, but guess what? It still works. All right, enough about that. That's the combo that you can do in here, and I know that somebody said in my 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 Edgar deck uh, video that, you know, it doesn't fit in here. It literally only fits in here. It's both cards have vampires on them. They literally say stuff that vampires say. You know, sanguine, exsanguinate. It's vampire stuff. Sorry, not sorry. It's the combo you do in this deck. So that's what I have for you as far as this uh, pre-cons upgrade section goes. If there's anything I'm missing or, you know, maybe I passed it on purpose, you know, go ahead and shoot me a line. Throw it in the uh, comment section. I know I missed a bunch just because I was. I'm really tired of doing these upgrade, you know, guides. I'm really happy that I get to do my own shit going forward for a couple weeks. So uh, that is it as far as the combo goes. I'm gonna and give you my spiel and get out of here, and you can go do what else you're gonna do. So this is where I ask you, as always, to do me the favor. Please like the video, give it a thumbs up, not a thumbs down, but a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you have not done so yet already. I don't know why you wouldn't. I put out more content than most people do at this point. I do a unpacking or a, a crack and pack a day. Uh, every week I do an extra long video, which can be anywhere from an unboxing and an upgrade guide to a commander of my own deck, a commander that I sell deck, all that good stuff. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, I got plenty of content, all right? And then share the video out. So for this video, anybody who's looking to find out what's inside of this, you know, product, please send it out to them. Anybody who's looking for a small upgrade guide to see what else you can add to this deck to make it hit harder, because it needs it, uh, share it out to them. Or to somebody who thinks would like the way that I am, likes what I do, and thinks, hey, this guy has it. Maybe I don't, who knows, but maybe you think I do. So share it out to somebody like that, all right? Uh, as far as anything else, it is the holiday season, but as of the making of this video and as of the day that this releases, shipping is not going to make it there by Christmas, unfortunately. So if you're looking for something for after Christmas, go to my Facebook page to see what decks I offer. If you want a commander deck, I offer $40 commander decks. They're pretty damn good. I have a video for each of them and an upgrade guide for them as well. I have starter decks in case you have a friend, a loved one, a family member who you want to get into magic. You don't know how to build them a starter deck. My decks work. They're easy enough for a starter. They're much better than a regular starter. They actually hit pretty hard. So go to the Facebook page, take a look at them. If you want to purchase one of them, I have a Facebook Marketplace profile. Just look for Blue Bears Games. I think on my page, there is a section where my store would be a link to it. And you should be able to go from there. And if not, you can ask me. I'll link it to you. Uh, so please, that's what helps me run this channel. I am very small time. I am one person. I don't get any help. I do not get to collaborate with anybody. I don't have any production because I have literally an old phone and myself to do everything. Any help is appreciated. Also, anything you buy goes to help a disabled person, meaning me. I don't make many, any money any other way, so it would help me out greatly. If you want to help a good cause, there's your cause, all right? I'm not going to go too much further than this feel. If you want to contact me, go to the Facebook page, uh, bluebearsgames at gmail.com, or put a comment in the section below, and we can talk there. Whatever you want to do. I'm pretty easy to talk to. 
I am busy, but I do make time. So that's it for the week. Enjoy your weekend. I will see you all next week. Have a good one.